Okay, let's say that you want to make a pattern out of a photograph. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So I've downloaded from Pixabay a copyright free image of this lime. This is a series of limes, I suppose I should say, which allows me to see a, uh, a full set of green things. So there are a few ways that we can play with this. We need to have this again for this assignment, a square two by two inches. So we could take the square marquee tool, change the style from normal up at the top of the screen here to fixed size and set it to uh, two inches by two inches. Assuming that the image is at 300 pixels per inch. So if we go to image image size, we can see that is the case, yay. So now if I click, see how, how small this square is. So this might not work super great for us. So another thing that we could do, oh, before we do anything though, I'm gonna set the style back to normal so that I won't accidentally try to select a square and find out that it's uh, a rectangle with a marquee tool, find out it's stuck at some square ratio or something. Another thing we could do is, uh, of course, just use the crop tool, which would allow us to just bring this to two inches wide. I'm just monitoring the side of the screen there and then two inches tall. But again, we'd see immediately that it's too small, so that's not really going to work. So what I'd recommend is actually this. Okay, not crop. Create a new document again. Yay! And set the inches to two inches by two inches with a 300 resolution. Tell it okay. All right. So what we're going to do is bring in the image and then we'll adjust it from there. So go back from, I'm hitting F to go into full screen mode so that I can slide things around. Second F is the presentation mode. Third F brings you back to normal. I'll pop over here real quick. I want this, uh, this image. I can just grab it with the, oops, just grab it with the uh, uh, selector, the move tool here, even though it's the background is locked, which would normally mean we complain. If you mouse over the, if you drag it and mouse over the tab up here to the new document, it will figure out that, oh, you're trying to actually put this thing in here. Now from class, we know that if you're going to be adjusting sizes wildly, you should convert this to a smart object first so you don't lose pixels. So what I do is I right click and I tell it convert to smart object and I zoom out a couple of times, control T, look how huge this thing is. Control T, drag this thing down. Okay, so we won't lose any anything here, but a couple of weird things will happen. If we go to filter other offsets, notice if we, uh, horizontal will still behave, sorry, vertical will still behave normally. Horizontal will start revealing that there's a lot more to this image before it starts to repeat because it is a smart object. Didn't get rid of things. So that's, that's okay. You can actually do some weird stuff where you kind of trick it using the crop tool and you just make sure that uh, the, you delete the original pixels and all that stuff and you hit enter and all that. We're, we're not gonna toy around with that. The easiest way to actually make this work properly is to just uh, come in here and use the second layer. So control A to select everything within our working field, which is the two inches by two inches by 300 pixels per inch. That's great. So that's 600 pixels by 600 pixels, essentially. Whatever, we don't need to know the math on that. Control A, Control C to copy, Control V to paste. Now, with the move tool, you'll notice that this guy is already cropped down. And it is not a smart object, it is just a normal object, which is fine. We still have the original smart object with everything in there that we can refer to later. So, great stuff. Now we can do filter, other, offsets. And sure enough, things just move around and we see a slight, a few slight problems. First of all, there's this seam. Notice that this stuff's cut off, so let's zoom in. See that? You can't have any seams for this to be a good pattern. So what you'd wanna do is come in here, carefully copy this out, and then you know maybe paste it in, then use the stamp tool, maybe referring to that uh, stamp tool video I posted up in the Forbes earlier, uh, the, that great Flurn stamp tool video. Go in there and you know go through all that. Uh, and in fact, I did exactly that already, so you don't have to watch me do all of that forever. So I've got just this image here, which is great. Copy this. I'll apply the uh, the mask. Apply layer mask. Okay, you know, control A, Control C, Control V, and we got this giant line. So for this line, 
I'm going to right click, convert to smart object, so that I can shrink it down without any worries whatsoever. I'm just going to use it to cover up this other line. Cool. So now we've got a conundrum though. We have two different layers in here. How do we, how do we set this up? So the, the easiest thing to do in your case would be control alt shift E. And again, this will just create a duplicate with one thing on it. So now I can do a filter other offsets and check that out. I've got all of this area now. So, but we've got more seams, more gaps. So what do we do with that? Well, we'd start taking in other bits and pieces and start covering stuff up. So in this case, one thing that might be fun to do is actually make a full collage out of it. If you had a more of a square image, the correct ratio, then you could come in and just cover those seams and you'd be done. But with something that has this much of a white gap, I'd actually kind of collage it instead. Control V gets us another giant copy of that uh, that line. So control T, I'm not gonna worry about uh, leaving it as a smart object in this case. I'm just gonna take it, I make a small one, I paste another one, make a slightly rotated one that's not as small, put that one like over it, is that okay? I'm going to uh, merge it down one. I'm going to merge it down one again. I'm going to go, f and control E is the shortcut for that. I'm doing this very destructively because I'm not too worried. This is kind of the planning phase. You just want to play around. Notice that I missed something already. So I'm already regretting my destructive, <laughs> my destructive mode. So I'm going to move that up a little bit. You'll have to do less repair that way. Oops. I'm going to use a very hard eraser to get that corner in there. That's bothering me. There we go. And now I'm going to merge that down, be destructive in this case. I'd recommend you guys take it a little slower, but I, I kind of want you to not have to spend 45 minutes per video just watching me do the filter offset. This is all stuff that you can figure out without any problem. I've got a very smart group of students this semester. I know you guys will be able to Google it and figure it all out. So paste it down, control T, shrink it. I'm holding down shift and alt to shrink it towards the middle. And I'm going to put you about here. Enter. All right, I think we need to uh, offset this one. Filter other offset, and uh, I haven't merged it down this time, which means I can cut it across the edges. Now that's something I want right there. Control Shift E makes a new copy again. You can see it's just the one copy. I just turned off the eyeballs on the other layers. All right, filter other offset. So this is the collage type technique. Uh, I dug out the video from last semester that I made on this. I did a very different technique using a pumpkin. I'll go ahead and post that as well so you can take a look at that and get an idea of what to do. And now you can see different different techniques other than just, just this one. I'm going to distort this a little bit so it's not too similar. Now, remember, you can't just have it crop off. That will give you problems. If you want to move something past the edge, you need to go up to filter, other offset, other offset, and zero that out, zero that out. That will let me, ooh, that looks pretty good. But I actually want to start by kind of just bringing it across. Yeah, over here a bit. Okay, control V, control T. Make a small one real quick that here. That looks pretty good. Yeah, and control alt shift E. I'm just leaving a chain of previous steps in place. So it's time to time to probably save this. Control S, just so that I don't lose what I'm doing. Put it in with the uh, other patterns. Call this one lines. Okay. And filter other offset. Fantastic. Oh no! Got some damage here. So a few things we could do, we could go back a step, figure out what went wrong, would have been this. This is damaged for some reason. Let's take a look at why. Ah, the offset messed us up. It was reading it off of the image's entire existence rather than the uh, size of the canvas. And there's an easy way to prevent that from happening, which I should have been doing, so I'm glad that this happened delete that control V what you want to do when you're just pasting in stuff. So notice that this, this shape 
is kind of funky. It's it's just kind of guessing about uh, uh, how to offset it properly. What we want it to do is be working straight off of the canvas size. The easiest way to do that is Control A, which will select the entire canvas, even though I'm on just this one lime layer. Whoops, this one line lime layer. Filter other offset. Well now, oops, there we go. Properly drag it across. Uh, I want it down a little bit more, which is fine in this case. So if we move it around now, see there's no pixels hiding in there. It is the right size. I'm just going to drag it down because I know there's no data up or down. Uh, control click with the move tool will temporarily activate the auto select, which will let you choose different pieces to move around. I'm just going to move that. Over here I'm going to make this a little smaller. But we'll need some other small ones to kind of offset that. It should be fine. All right. Control Alt Shift E. Control V. Oh no, though, we want it in kind of one of these gap areas. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the collage here, and I'm going to go to Filter, Other Offsets. That'll give us some space. Okay, turn this back on, Control-T. Oh, but wait, it was not a smart object. Was it? So I believe, no, no, it's okay. Uh, I have it set so that it will not delete the cropped pixels. If you have it set so that it does drop, delete cropped pixels, then it would have destroyed all that all that hard work. So I'm going to make a really, really tiny one. Put that uh, here. I think that'll be kind of cute. This is looking more like a squash than, <laughs> than anything else. Control V, shift to constrain proportions, shift alt to shrink it down while constraining proportions to the middle. This one over here. This could be a little interesting. Control Shift Alt E. This is just a quick nerdy way to do it. Filter other offsets. Yeah, I want I want like another small one on top of this one. So Control V, Control T, shrink, shrinky dink. Never never scale it up. Has to make up pixels if it's scaling it up. Scale it down so that it. It kind of just builds up on top of itself. And we'll put it, put it over here, I think. So this should actually be interesting. It will kind of make a uh, pattern going along the edge. Control Shift E. Filter other offsets. So what I want to do is this. Just planning ahead. Oops. Shift down. See how it's making like this circle? Let's finish off that circle. And I mean this circle around it. Okay, finish that off. That means we need to have one up here if there's not one already. Yeah, one right here should do it. Tell it okay. Control V. Control T. it a little bit. All right, we haven't made out of this image. So we're going to go save it, control S, and then we're going to go edit, define pattern, lines, and we'll take a quick look at what this looks like, making a new one, coming in here and um, setting it to like some super huge number of inches here. We'll do 10 by 10 again. There we go. 10 by 10. Adjustment layer pattern. Oh, nice. That looks really good. Look at that. Now, if we leveled this a bit with a level adjustment layer, whoa, with a level adjustment layer, pop up in his properties, see that maybe, maybe we could have made it a little darker, make it a better line. So yeah, I think that would look a little bit better. So we're gonna go back to the original pattern here. Nope. And we're going to just toss on an adjustment layer on top. Bam, do levels. You could of course use curves. I think for something this simple, 
it's not necessary. And as always, holding down the Alt key will let me show if I'm clipping any of the channels to white. Those should be fine. And on the black point, what channels you're clipping to black should be fine. Actually, maybe not clip anything to black. Well, little, just a little bit in the yellow channel. There we go. And I'm just going to darken up by sending the middle gray. Okay. Save. And then edit define pattern. Notice that now to edit define pattern, it can't do it. Well, it's because I have a mask selected. I'll go and click on the um, actual adjustment layer. We'll be fine. Edit adjust the pat edit define pattern. Sorry about that. Edit define pattern. Limes. Tell it okay. All right. Uh, and we'll do another video with one more thing you can do. <laughs> See you in a minute.